On Tuesday, we had fantastic news. Two members of my department, John Martinez and Michelle Devaray, won the Nobel Prize in physics. This is unbelievable, uh, except for everyone who knew them, uh, which in that case, it wasn't that much of a surprise. We had a nice celebration for them, uh, but this is just the beginning. And in honor of this Nobel Prize, I've re-edited a video that we made about a year ago when we cracked into the mystery fridge of John Martinez. Um, he had um, moved on to Google and we inherited these fridges. And so we got inside them and got to see all the details of some Nobel Prize winning work. So join us for this nice video and enjoy. All right, guys, we've got a fun video today. Um, these are two adiabatic demagnetization refrigerators. These uh, use a something called a pulse tube cooler to get you down to about four Kelvin and then have a four Tesla magnetic uh, field from a superconducting magnet that cools down two salt pills um, down to uh, temperatures of about 50 millikelvin. So this is an alternative way to get cold besides the dilution refri refrigerators we've already showed you. But this uh, is much smaller. You saw that dilution refrigerator was a huge thing that we've been working on. This is a really compact system. So when we go to a telescope like the Subaru telescope in Hawaii where we do a lot of our work, um, we, we want something smaller. So this is a nice way to bring a small system. So today we have two uh, unknown ADRs. These came from a colleague of mine, uh, Professor John Martinez, who does quantum computing. He's not using them anymore, so we're taking them over. And we have no idea what's in them. They haven't been opened up for six years. So this is an unboxing video, and we get to see what's inside these, um, these ADRs. So I'm going to come and give you a little closer look here, and then we can, uh, uh, we'll start the process. All right, so this is the first one. You can see this one has um, some DC connectors. So there's two connectors up here to bring 24 lines of DC in, and then there's eight SMAs. So this was clearly used for testing. Um, we just don't know what's in it. So we're gonna basically go and open it up and figure it out. And we actually have a second one too. This one over here, you can see them next to each other. They're the same unit, um, but this one has eight SMA connectors right here. And it also has, hard to see it, eight SMA connectors right here. So we have um, two fridges that are clearly have different wiring. This one's called Quaid, and it's this one, actually, we also have this box here. I think this is the thermometry box, but we'll find out. All right, so the first step, we got to get these open. We managed to salvage the mount for these. They essentially attach to Unistrut. We don't have something perfect in our lab, but we do have some Unistrut. So we'll try to get Unistrut that works and then hang it up and then we'll drop the shields and see what's inside. All right, so we're now going to try to put the Unistrut mounts on the wall. This wasn't how they were designed, so we might have a little work to do. All right, let's give it a try. All right, we're gonna put the weight on it real slow. It didn't fall yet, so I'm gonna call that a victory. All right, so we've got the fridge hanging and we can now take off the shields. This could very well be under vacuum. Uh, we haven't cracked the vacuum yet, so let's do that first. All right, I'm gonna open up the main valve, see if it's under vacuum. It is under vacuum. Wow. That's been under vacuum for years and years. It's a good sign. There's one component in the ADR, which is a paramagnetic salt pill 
Uh, it's called, it's ferric ammonium alum. We call it FAA. And that salt pill is hydroscopic. Um, it's sealed in a stainless steel container and welded in it. But if it develops leaks and water gets in, uh, it gets destroyed. So having the vacuum is a nice little extra protection. All right. So vacuum's broken. Now we can remove the shields. These fridges have a really nice system. So instead of having to take off a million bolts, we can just open up these clamps, I think. Never done it before, so we'll find out. Oh yeah. All right, so that's, now we should just be able to lower the shields off of it. Let's see. Nice. So we've removed the 50K shield or the, the room temperature shield. We can see uh, a little bit now on the fridge. There's um, these coaxes, which were not made extremely uh, cleanly, but we'll, we can live with that. So these are stainless steel coaxes that are going down to 50K. This is the, these are the magnet wires that bring the high current into the magnet. And then there's this huge, so these connectors here are wired up to a, big oh yeah see this this cable right here i'm not sure if you can see it but there's a loom cable which is come it's attaching here this is a cry cryo loom cable so these are there's at least 24 conductors going down to uh to lower temperature stages through this pass through right here all right so what we need to do now is we need to take out these screws to drop the next stage All right, we're free. We'll start lowering it down. This is the 77 Kelvin shield. Nice and light, nickel plated aluminum, I think. All right, so let's see what we got now. So our stainless steel coaxes are going through the, uh, the 50K plate and they're terminating here in SMA connectors on the um, on the four Kelvin plate. There's also some feed throughs over here, which are not being used and are being taped up. This is the magnet pass through and the, um, the DC connectors here. You can see this loom cable. This is uh, bringing the 20, at least 24 connectors down here. Now, one thing we've noted, we've got a bunch of tape that's loose. We, we've learned the hard way that you gotta have all the holes sealed up going into 4K really well. So this loose tape, all needs to be replaced um, before we do anything with it. Um, but yeah, looks good. Nice, simple ADR. Okay, we'll now take off the um, 4K stage. This is a pretty easy fridge to, to work on. HPD did a pretty good job engineering it to make it pretty straightforward. Sometimes there are an awful lot of holes here, but you don't have to use them all clearly because they're only using about one out of every three of these um, uh, holes on the bolt circle here, oh, screw holes. So the moment of truth, we're gonna drop the 4K shield and see what we've got at base temperature. Ooh. Here's the four Kelvin shield. You see the inside is painted black. That's usually an AeroGlaze Z306 um, epoxy paint. You, you can't just anodize it or use unanodized aluminum because um, that those don't um, absorb at the infrared wavelengths. You need a paint that's black in the optical, but also in the infrared. All right, so we've got the ADR, which is the, the cooling system, is, is this, uh, it's actually these Kevlar suspended pucks. It's a cool system. We'll show that in another video. We've got the low noise factory amplifier that's, that's um, reading things out. And then down here, we have a surprise. This is, there's an experiment still in here. This is a magnetic shield. So this is something like a mu metal magnetic shield. Let's uh, take that off and see what's in there. Oh, I see. There's, uh, there's two different things. So. I gotta take off only the outer, only for the outer shield. So there, this is a two piece magnetic shield. One, one piece that's designed to 
you know, be removed every time you change your experiment and then a base plate that looks like it's designed to stay on between experiments. Let's drop the magnetic shield. All right. So what we got in here is an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary plate that's going to be at the uh, base temperature of the fridge. And then th this is a floating, this is an interesting design. Yeah, these are, these are just the coaxes coming up. I see that. Um, okay, so this is all floating. There's one big box here. Oh yeah, it's got a part number on it. Let's see what that is. I bet that's an isolator. Uh, CTH1392 something something. So that's probably an isolator. And this is, uh, that looks like the Martinez old design quantum computer chip. So I think that's a quantum, that's some kind of qubit in there for, just for testing purposes. Um, all right, that looks great. Now, where does the DC wiring come out? Let's see. There's the hemp amplifier right there. This is where, so this is the DC wiring. The DC wiring, this is the DC wiring right here. So this only is breaking out to this pad here. So these are all the wires that are coming out that are, um, most of these are actually look like they're reading out the, the thermostat on the fridge, although there's this breakout here. So this is probably amplifier bias and thermometry wires here. Um, yeah, here's the, here's the hemp power. All right, so these, see there's two kinds, there, there's this coax right here. This thin stuff is, um, well, it's actually, yeah, see, see, this one has a, a copper sleeve and it's soldered in here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that, um, this, this is a niobium tie coax. It's a superconducting coax. And you can see there's a couple of them going. This is probably Cooper nickel right here. All right. And so this is the, um, uh, this is the isolator probably. This is the quantum, the qubit chip. So we have um, really um, a fully functional refrigerator here. This looks great. I think we're going to be able to uh, repurpose this really easily for MKID measurements. So that's the first one. Um, we actually have another one of these, and uh, I'm going to close this one up, and we'll eventually look at the second one. So we have figured out what we're going to do with the second ADR. We're going to actually build a test rig that has both ADRs in it. So I've ordered the components for a frame and we figured out which electronics we have and what we need. Uh, the test stand is gonna have uh, two purposes. One is gonna be four wire measurements, which lets us measure resistivity and IV curves for superconducting devices, um, and also to do MKID measurements in that stand. And then the second one is for a very special project that we've just proposed. And um, I'll fill you in on that when we get there. But for today, uh, before we can build the test in, I need to open up the second ADR. We need to get inside of it and see what we've got so we know what we need to buy because we don't have any of the wiring for the ADR, so we're gonna have to redo the wiring. Uh, so today, I'm gonna mount this on the stand and uh, we'll see what's inside. Unlike the previous fridge, this fridge is not under vacuum. So looks like this one was left with air in it. Shouldn't be a problem though. All right, so with the um, vacuum can off, we can do a little inspection here, see what we've got. Uh, again, the loose tape, because it's old, all that needs to be uh, replaced. We have a bunch of coax. These look actually a little bit nicer than the previous ones. So we got coaxes. Uh, we got how many? Uh, looks like eight coaxes going down off this flange. The other flange is not wired up at all. So those, those other eight coaxes aren't doing anything. And this main box up here uh, seems to be where the um, DC wires are coming in. Oh yeah. There's actually, you can see this has the same setup as the previous one. There's just a box that's sitting on top of it that's holding the thermometry and everything. And then there's some DC lines that are going down here. So we'll see what we've got in a minute. 
Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, someone, someone put every one of these screws in. Oh, no. This is going to, someone was very conscientious. This is going to take forever. All right, let's see what happens now. Removing the 50 Kelvin can. So on this one, you'll see um, we've got the same coaxes coming uh, down to four Kelvin. So we've got eight coaxes to four Kelvin. You can see they built in a provision to put eight more in, but never actually did it. Um, then there's this micro D connector that's, that's coming through here, bringing DC wiring in. Got the magnet wires here. Everything looks, looks pretty stock up to, up to this point. All right, just the four Kelvin can now. This same conscientious graduate student has put every screw in, so it'll take a little while. Quite a hodgepodge of screws in here. Some are brass, some are stainless. Some have a different size. Oh, these are flatheads. Every kind of screw in here. I uh, hate flatheads. Why would you put flatheads in here? Uh, someone probably put flatheads in here and then never opened the fridge again because they were too much of a pain to get out. So now I got to figure out what's going on with these two that don't want to come out of here. So they're probably 564 fourths. Let's see, or metric. Yeah, they're 564 fourths. Those are getting thrown away. Someone, those are. Those are 256 screws. Someone seems to have jammed a 256 into a 440 hole. Pick that up later. All right, let's look at the four Kelvin stage. Oh, no, I missed one. Where is it? Oh, it's another flathead. No. God, they hid the flatheads in here. All right, got it. All right, let's look at this four Kelvin shield. Oh, very interesting. All right, what do we got here? So we have our eight coax right here. Uh, there are some attenuators on the other side of the, four cal on, of the 4K plate. This is the ADR extension. So there's a magnetic shield right here, but the magnetic shield is removed and instead they fitted a Helmholtz coil. So this is a magnet. So this is going to be probably superconducting niobium tie wire in here. And this is designed to put a magnetic field on whatever's inside this, um, this uh, sample box, which presumably would be at, this is all at 4 Kelvin, I think. Actually, this middle part may all be at base temperature. So that's pretty interesting. Okay. Then we have a bunch. We have another isolator over here. We have a bunch of... Um, these are DC blocks. This is an RF switch over here. So that RF switch is doing something. Here's the, um, the connector that has the DC wires on it. So RF switch, and then there's a bunch of niobium tie and cooper nickel coax here going down to the experiment, which again is in this uh, box right here. So overall, this one also looks good. Um, I think we're going to be able to work with this. Won't have too much of a problem um, getting everything going. Just needs a little minor refurbishment. One thing I don't, oh yeah, here's the amp. So this has got another one of the low noise factory uh, hemp's in there too. All right, so that's great. We have everything we need for uh, testing here. All right, so keep your eyes open. We're going to have uh, more videos where we build a big frame to permanently mount these. We're going to do all the plumbing to get the compressors hooked up to water cooling and get the gas lines in to the, uh, to the lab to power these things. And then we'll hook up electronics and we will give it a, a go. And so that is what's coming up. All right. Thanks for joining us this time. Like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.